What is up guys, in this video we're going to be going over how we can create a code scanner app and works with essentially any QR code or any barcode that you can think of. And the first thing that's going to happen is that when we start the app, we're going to get a request which is going to ask us whether we want to allow the camera. And if we refuse it, it's going to give us a button that allows us, of course, to enable that. And when we click on enable, it's going to open up the camera in that kind of format you can see with nice round corners and a button down here that says scan again. If I move my phone to my screen you're going to see some QR codes. If we click scan again it's going to scan that one. If we scan this one over here instead, let's go a bit closer, you're going to notice it's going to take the content out of it and we can also do this with QR codes. So let's take the Wikipedia one first and click on scan again and it's going to have the English Wikipedia. If there's no code it's going to continuously search until it finds some code. And once it finds it, it's going to stop there so that we can scan again. And it's not going to continuously scan. So that is a positive. But of course, you can change this later if you wanted to continuously scan endlessly. So that's what we're going to be making in this tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is use this expo install command because we need to install the expo barcode scanner and i'm going to actually leave this page in the description down below because it tells you all of the supported formats of barcodes including the qr code so this might be a useful list for you guys but the most important part of this is the expo install expo barcode scanner so we're going to copy that and inside our file which is just a fresh blank template we can go ahead and open the terminal and you can see i called this project bc toot so all you have to do is install the Expo barcode scanner. And since I never know if I'm running as administrator, I'm going to go ahead and type in sudo and entered my password. And as soon as that has installed, we want to go ahead and start our project immediately. So Expo start. And for me, I'm going to type in localhost because I'm running this through a cable and I'm going to run it on my Android phone. And very shortly, we should see the app appear right here. And perfect, now we have the default app, so we can go ahead and close the terminal and we can start editing it directly. So the first thing we should import is React, uh, which is already here, but we also want to import use state and use effect to manage the state in a functional way. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and open a pair of curly brackets and start with use state and also use effect. Next, we also want to go inside here and we want to import a button in addition to what we have there already. And finally, let's go ahead and import the barcode scanner. So barcode scanner from Expo barcode scanner and click on save. So the first thing we're going to do inside our app is create the state constants. So the first one we're going to create is constant has permission. And we also want to set has permission which is going to initially be set to null. Then constant scanned, which is a Boolean, and we want to set that later. And this will initially be set to false. Then we need to provide a text field. So text, set text, and that's going to be equal to use state. And we're going to provide the text not yet scanned initially. And those are the states we have to work with. And another constant we're going to create is ask for camera permission so we can get the user's approval to use their camera. And that's going to equal an arrow function. And inside here, we'll create a parentheses and create a async function, which is also going to be an arrow function. Open a block and inside this block, we're going to type in constant status and that's going to equal await barcode scanner dot request permission async. And if this is successful, we can type in set has permission with the status, which is going to be equal to granted. So if this is granted, this will return true, which means the set has permission will be set to true and the app will continue to function. And since we want to create a promise, we have to add an empty pair of parentheses at the end right here. Next, we want to ask for the camera permission as soon as the app loads. So we're going to use the use effect. And inside here, we're going to add an arrow function with a block and we're going to ask for the camera permission. And at the end, we're going to add that there are no requirements. So an empty pair of brackets and we will finish it there. Now we need to specify what happens when we scan the barcode. So we're going to create a constant, which is called handle 
barcode scanned. And that's going to equal pair of parentheses with the type of data we're scanning and the data itself. So the type will tell us what kind of barcode it is or what QR code it is. And the data will be what's contained within the barcode. So that's going to equal an empty block with set scanned, which will be set to true. And we're going to set the text to the data. And also because it's always nice to have in our console, we are going to type in console log and we're going to start with the type plus the type and the data, which will be set on a new line. So data plus the data. And that will take care of handling the data that we get from the barcode. And up next, we need to check for the permissions and there's going to be different return screens depending on what happens. So when the user opens the app for the first time, it's going to ask for the permission. But of course, we do not want to return this screen immediately. We want to return a placeholder screen. So for this case, we're going to go ahead and type in if the has permission is equal to null, then we're going to open up this block and we need to return a view. So inside here, we're going to go ahead and copy this part right here, the placeholder view, take away the status bar. And we're going to type in here that we are requesting for camera permission. Now, if we click on save, we can click on, I still have no idea. So now you're going to notice if we reload the app that behind here, there's going to be the screen that we specified right here. So you can put some different background or you can put whatever you want, but this is the screen that will appear while we have this box up here. If we click on refuse, it's going to go back to the one down here. And we do not want that to happen. So we have to provide an additional if statement. So here we're going to go ahead and type in if has permission is equal to false, then we want something else to happen. We have to return a different view. So here we're going to return the same container as earlier, place it inside here. And we are going to start off by giving this text a margin. So we'll type in style is equal to margin and 10. Then we can also type in no access to camera, which will allow us to also include a button. And the first thing we should include is a title, which is going to be set to allow camera. Then we need to provide an on press function, which says ask for camera permission. And that's why we turned it into a function earlier. So we can reuse it here. Now, if we go ahead and click on save, we can refuse the camera and we can allow it later by clicking on the button. So, so far, so good. Now we have the two screens that should appear in case the user does not have the camera enabled. Now, the last thing we want to do is return the main view with the code scanner, of course. So we will just include this comment here. And to make things simple, we are going to remove both the status bar and the text. So the first thing we want to insert is a view, which is going to have a style, which is equal to styles dot barcode box. And we're going to create this immediately because we want the barcode box to have round corners and the barcode scanner by default does not allow us to do that. So we have to create a container. So I'm just going to go to our styles and right below, I'm going to insert the barcode box. And I'm going to leave a link to my GitHub repository in the description down below. So you can just copy this if you want. But otherwise, all I did here is provide a background of white. The items inside are aligned to center, justify to center. The height is set to 300. The width is set to 300. I put overflow to hidden and then I gave it a radius. And actually, I can safely take away this background color because I have a background color of tomato at the bottom. And then also to get this out of the way, I created another style sheet, which is called main text. And all it does is create a font size of 16 and give that font size a margin of 20. But now we can turn back to our main view since we have all of the styles that we need. And the first thing we have to do inside here is create our barcode scanner. So barcode scanner, and we have to type in on barcode scanned, which if scanned is equal to true, then we can set it to undefined. Otherwise, we want to handle the barcode scanned. And we're going to provide a style for this, which is going to set the height to 400 and the width to 400 as well. And then we need to close this barcode scanner with a slash. Right below this view, we can go ahead and insert a text. So we'll type in text. And the first thing we need to provide is a style, which is going to be equal to styles dot main text. And inside here, we will insert the result from the data. So data. And finally, at the bottom, we are going to 
insert a button if scanned is equal to true and if the button title or first we need to create the button and the title is equal to scan again then we can also provide an on press which is going to equal an empty function and we are going to set scanned to false and i also want this button to be of the color of tomato so now you can go ahead and click on save and we are going to refuse it first but immediately after we can go ahead and allow the access by clicking on consent and we cannot find the variable data and this is fair enough because in our main text this is supposed to be called text and not data the text is what is holding the data so go ahead and change that to text and click on save again and this time you're going to notice that we're going to have the qr code scanner working now and let's actually move this a bit closer and click scan again let's go to the wikipedia click on scan again and let's go over here and scan this one and we're going to get that and what about this one over here we get NY12345. So that essentially was the barcode app tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.